Hello and welcome to our worship of God here at First Church of Christ in Glastonbury, Connecticut. First Church is an open, welcoming, and affirming congregation of the United Church of Christ, which means no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are most welcome here. And it is our privilege to welcome you to our annual Music Celebration Sunday. I'm guessing that before the weather turned beautiful, there was a lot of Netflix binge television watching and the rewatching of old classic movies. A few weeks ago, I was exercising in my basement. For yet another time, I watched The Shawshank Redemption, a film, iconic film made in 1994, which put out Stephen King's novel of the late 1940s of a Maine prison. In one of the classic scenes from this movie, Andy Dufresne, played by Tim Robbins, commandeered the prison's PA system and was able to play a song for all the prisoners to hear, two women opera singers. Well, Andy's friend and fellow prisoner, Red, reflected, I tell you, those voices soared farther and higher than anybody would dare to dream in a dark gray place. For a moment, every man at Shawshank was free. Then Andy said, that's the beauty of music. They can never take it away from you. Friends, no matter what we are going through in our lives, a pandemic, sadness, loneliness, grief, despair, endless suffering in our world, children who are homeless and hungry, music is always there for us. They can never take it away from us. And so today, it is our privilege, our joy, to celebrate the awesome gift we have from God, the gift of music. Welcome to First Church. Welcome to First Church. Glad you're here. Glad you're here. Gonna do some singing. Gonna do some singing. And listen to the word. And listen to the word. Cause singing at church is lots of fun. We listen to the word and sing the songs. Welcome to First Church. Welcome to First Church. Glad you're here. Glad you're here. We are glad you are here, and so let us now join our voices and hearts in song, singing our first hymn, One in Music, God is Glorified, verses 1, 2, and 4.
Let us not join together in our opening prayer followed by the Lord's Prayer. Awesome and amazing God, you go to the depths of love in the heights of caring for us during good times and during challenging times. You sing to us in the beauty of each dawn. You walk with us each day. You bless us each evening and you hide us under the shadow of your wings each night. Awesome and amazing God, we sing praise to you and proclaim your melody of love to all creation. Our lives become songs and instruments of praise to that wondrous and steadfast love. We now pray this in the name of the one who came to sing his song of love, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Good morning and welcome to Music Celebration Sunday. Lola Elliott Hugh here and I am joined by Alberta Elliott, hymn scholar and friend of First Church, also known as Mom. We're delighted to be with you this morning. Kate and David and Angela have asked us to start things off as we welcome you to Music Celebration Sunday. And while things look a little bit different, you will today still, even though we're not all in the meeting house together, you will hear from messengers of music. You will hear about a hymn of hope. You will hear from the chancel choir. You will hear the youth choirs. And miraculously, Peggy has helped pull together a bell anthem. So all of us from the music department send our love to you. Enjoy Music Celebration Sunday. How lovely are the messengers that bring us the gospel of peace. I grew up in a musical family. My parents, mother and father, and my two sisters and I were all singers. On our piano were five hymnals. Every night after dinner, 
we would each take a hymnal and while we sat around the table, we sang all the stanzas of two hymns. After that was over, I put a bookmark in my hymnal. I was the pianist. And over a period, a daily period of however long it took, we sang our way through the entire Methodist hymnal. Other musical stories led me to spend my career in the public school music classroom. Along the way, I earned a master's degree at the Hart School of Music, University of Hartford. While I was there, I dug deeply into the study of hymnology. When they asked me to bring you a hymn this morning, my thought went immediately to a mighty fortress is our God. It is not an easy hymn, but it does bring us wonderful peace and reassurance. It is the bedrock of the Protestant church. Even in today's COVID-19 virus, that plagues our beautiful planet, we are fortunate indeed that it was Martin Luther, a priest of great faith, a consummate musician who also earned a doctorate degree, yes, 500 years ago, a true artist and the founder of the Protestant church. As the closing hymn of today's worship, we will use stanzas one, three, and four of number 260 in your hymnal if you have one at home. Pay attention to Martin Luther's striking metaphors. God, a mighty fortress, a bulwark, our helper amid the flood of mortal ills. Yes, Martin Luther knew mortal ills, and he called them devils that filled the world. As a matter of fact, he elevated them to the prince of darkness. Our darkness for today is the pandemic, but Martin Luther reminds us that we need not fear for God has willed his truth to triumph through us. His kingdom is forever. Our messengers are the chancel choir. And while Dr. Martin Luther had nothing to do with technology, it is Dr. Angela Salcedo who manages the necessary technology for today. At one time, I had the experience of singing under a very, very fine choral conductor. He called this hymn the strongest hymn of all time. He said that to change it, to arrange it, to add a descant, or to alter one word or one note of the hymn would be to weaken it. So, when it comes time to sing stanzas one, three, and four of that hymn, using your own electronic device, sing with all of your faith with all of your voice, but that doesn't mean loud. That means using the fullness of your voice. And also sing with joy. Just sing it.
Many think that Psalm 100 ranks second only to the 23rd Psalm in popularity. It's brief and straightforward, and it gives us very specific instructions about how God wants us to live. Shout for joy to God. Serve God with gladness. Know that God is God and we are God's people. Enter into God's gates with thanksgiving. Make a joyful noise, the psalmist says. Don't just whisper or mumble or stir around, afraid you're going to disturb the person next to you. Shout with all your might. Let the world know that we are God's people. In the second reading from today, you will hear the Apostle Paul share that same message as the psalmist. Paul was speaking to the people who made up the new church at Ephesus. Be filled with the Spirit and sing and make music. Our call to be faithful people reminds us of the importance of singing and praising God, knowing that we are part of an amazing family of God's beloved. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness, come into his presence with singing. Know that the Lord is God, it is he that made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him, bless his name. For the Lord is good, his steadfast love endures forever and his faithfulness to all generations. Be filled with the Spirit, speaking to one another with psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit. Sing and make music from your heart to the Lord, always giving thanks to God the Father for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ.
we are not alone. God is always with us. And sometimes we need reminders of this eternal truth. We are not alone. God is with us. Lately in our house, we've been talking a lot about when sporting events might come back. You see, my little Andrew, seven years old, is obsessed with baseball. And there's only so many times that you can watch the reruns of the 2019 Best Home Runs. So he's very eager for sports to come back and for people to gather in stadiums and baseball parks. You see, there is a certain amount of energy when that happens. Bill was going to his college. He had long since graduated, and he was going back for a football game. And it was the last two minutes, and the game was very close. So he called his wife, Heather, and held up the cell phone and you could hear one side of the stadium of 100,000 people screaming, we are, and then the other side saying, Penn State, we are Penn State. Those fans, the home team, left triumphant, so they were quite excited. Heather reflected on hearing the chants, we are Penn State and said how moving it was, and it brought tears to her eyes because it was a declaration of belonging. It was stating who those people are and where their allegiance goes. Well, we, as people of faith, have an even more amazing declaration of belonging for the words from Psalm 100, the psalmist says, Know that the Lord is God. It is he that made us, and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Don't we all want to know who we belong to and where we belong? Sometimes it's music that reminds us that we are more than just individuals, that we are part of something bigger. You see, when I was growing up, music was always sung in my house and on long car trips especially. Where have all the flowers gone? This land is your land, this land is my land. He's got the whole world in his hands. Let there be peace on earth. Sometimes music challenges us to make the world a better place and to know that there are people all around us. And sometimes music comforts us. You see, it was just this past Monday and my little Lucas was having a rough day. His stomach hurt and he was lethargic, which is not common for Lucas and all he wanted to do was cuddle with his mama. So we laid there and cuddled, and I was looking at my phone on Facebook, and my friend Liz Miller's choir appeared, and these are the words that we heard. We are not alone, we are not alone, we are not alone, God is with us, we are not alone. My boys are not immune to the anxiety of the world and what's going on. Hard questions often come my way. Mama, 
When will the virus go away? Mama, why are so many people dying from this virus? Mama, when can we go to the playground again? Or the library? And the questions keep coming. Sometimes I don't have the words to answer the challenging questions. That Monday morning when Lucas wasn't feeling good and clearly his anxiety was running high, he cuddled with me and played that song over and over again. Sometimes we need reminders of whose we are and what we are part of. Lucas kept saying, I just love this song so much, Mama. I just love this song so much. Music can inspire us and challenge us. Music can comfort us. Music reminds us that we are not alone and that we are God's beloved. For this we give thanks. Amen. Let us now give thanks for the messengers that bring us music, joining together in our litany of thanksgiving. The people of God have sung songs and played instruments from the beginning of time. For the glorious gift of music and for giving us the ability to sing, play, listen, and respond, we say thank you, God. For the songs that keep us connected with saints and traditions of our past, we say Thank you, God. For songs that remind us who we are and whose we are, we say thank you, God. 
for new ways of singing old songs and for new songs that stretch our hearts and minds, we say, thank you, God. For composers, teachers, singers, ringers, and all musicians, we say, thank you, God. For music that instructs our mind, strengthens our spirits, challenges our hearts, comforts our whole selves, and stirs our souls, we say, thank you, God. And let us now join our voices and hearts in singing A Mighty Fortress is Our God, verses 1, 3, and 4. join us in the commissioning. Let us now go forth into the world in peace, to be of good courage, to hold fast to that which is good, to render to no one evil for evil, to strengthen the faint-hearted, to support the weak, to help the afflicted, to rejoice in the power of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> 